Hey everyone and welcome to another video. First off, I'm sorry it's been so long since the last one again, but I promise that from now on, videos will be more regular on the channel. Now, today, I'm gonna take a break from the flags and talk about countries that never existed. And by this, I mean countries or regions that are either unrecognized or just somewhat unnoticed by most. So let's get to it. First off, we have the Isle of Man, a self-governing dependency of the British Crown, but not technically a part of the United Kingdom or the European Union. It's located between Ireland and Northern England and has a population of around 85,000 people. Interestingly, it has the world's oldest continuous ruling body, the Parliament, known as Tynwald which has governed the island since the arrival of the Vikings in the 8th century. It was also one of the first places in the world to give women the voting right as early as 1881, and in 2006 they were the first to lower the voting age to 16. Next we have Circassia, which declared independence in the 1500s, but was conquered by Russia in the late 1800s. Its capital is Sochi location of the first Russian Winter Olympics. It has a population of 700,000 people. It's located in the Caucasus region between Georgia and Crimea. Russia conquered Circassia when the Ottoman Empire started to fall. The final Circassian warriors were defeated in 1864 and what is portrayed as a genocide of the local population followed, killing up to 1 million people. Moving on to a happier story, we have Christiania, a self-governing communal society in Copenhagen, Denmark. It was declared on the 26th of September of 1971 and has a population of only 850 people. It started as an illegal experiment in the 1970s. A group of people following the whole 60s hippie vibe occupied old military barracks and created a free town. Today, the Danish government has offered a possibility for the people to buy the land. A good solution, but one that goes against their own principles. Next, we travel south, even though it's called Northern Cyprus. This territory declared its independence in 1983, after the invasion of the island by Turkey. Its territory is the northeastern third of the island and has a population of around 295,000 people. Up next, we have a strategic zinc mine region created in 1816 when Prussia and the Netherlands could not decide who would control it. It was called Morsnet and its capital was Kelmis, holding a population of only 3,000 people. An interesting fact about Morsnet is that for a short period it became a haven for Esperantists who renamed it Amikeju and declared it as a haven from all that is absurd and unworthy in convention. Even though the song that was projected to be their national anthem was the O Christmas Tree song, which is a little unconventional. It disappeared right after World War I with the Treaty of Versailles, and today it's a part of Belgium. Next we have Forvik or Forwick Holm, a Shetland Island state created by an English sailor. It declared its independence in 2011 and its population is only one man, the sailor. It has a similar story to that of Sealand, which was founded on an old oil rig in 1967, having a population of 27 and demanding its status as an independent nation off the coast of southern England. Going back to the Caucasus, we have the Russian-supported enclave in Georgia, Abkhazia which has declared its independence three times, in 1918, 1921, and then again in 1992. It holds a population of 240,000 people, and its capital is Sukhumi. It became Stalin's favorite holiday spot, and became sort of a vacation resort for the KGB and Soviet government elites. Today, the nation's original population is a minority, and most people are Russian. Traveling to a hotter region, we have Catalonia, the corner of Spain that wants independence. It first declared it in October of 1934, and more recently in 2017. In December of 2017, the largest part of the 7.6 million population voted for parties which support independence, but it has not yet been officially granted. 
We can trace back some of the tension between Catalans and Spain to Franco's dictatorship, in which Catalonia endured a systematic attempt to have its different culture destroyed. Staying in the Mediterranean, we travel to Saborga, a principality which declared independence from Italy after a referendum in 1995, with a population of only 312 people. The region is fairly close to Monaco, another independent principality in France. It has a very interesting history. It became a principality of the Holy Roman Empire in the year 1079, remaining independent for close to 600 years until it was sold to the House of Savoy. It was then sort of ignored for a few hundred years. When Italy was formed, Saborga was not mentioned. And an interesting aspect of it is that its ruling prince is actually elected by the population. Next, Transnistria, a separatist region of Moldova, loyal to the Soviet Union and with close ties to Russia even today. It declared its independence in 1990 and has a population of around 500,000 people. Today, it's seen as a hub for crime and sort of a haven for Stalinism in modern Europe. Now, going a little north, we have Ruthenia, a republic which only lasted one day on the 15th of March of 1939 with its capital city of Kust and a population of close to 1 million. Their downfall is kind of a mess. They were part of Czechoslovakia and they then became independent for a few hours. But they were then defeated by the Hungarian army, which was supported by Germany, while their Greek Catholic bishop president was arrested by the Soviet secret police. Eventually, they were annexed and became a part of the Nazi empire. As a final country, we go back to the Black Sea one more time, a region which is apparently very troubled, to talk about Crimea, the peninsula where independence has been declared several times already. The two million people, with Sevastopol as its capital, have been declared independent four times, in 1917, 1918, 1992, and then finally in 2014. The most recent declaration resulted in the separation from Ukraine and the annexation by the Russian Federation. It had happened before. In the late 1800s, Crimea was briefly independent after the Russian-Ottoman War, but was then annexed by Catherine the Great. The original population is known as the Tatars, which ruled Crimea for over 500 years. They were highly prosecuted, first by Imperial Russia and then by the Soviet Union. Stalin accused the entire ethnicity of treason and deported them to Central Asia, replacing them with Russians in Crimea. This policy was fairly common during Stalin's rule. Most of the socialist Soviet republics had their original population either relocated or killed and replaced with Russians, probably in order to consolidate the idea of one Soviet nation. After 45 years in exile, Tatars were allowed to return to a Russian populated Crimea which, in the meantime, had been offered to Ukraine as a gift during the times of the Soviet Union. And those are a few of the non-existing countries in Europe. Thanks for watching and make sure to subscribe if you want to catch the next videos on countries that don't exist in Africa and America and also more fun with flags. Comment your opinions and suggest future videos. If you get a chance, donate to my Patreon and help me make better videos more often. Once again, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.